In this video, I'll show you how to graph the derivative of a function using the context of the speed of a football while being thrown. Let's start by watching a video of a person throwing a football. We'll eventually want to graph the speed of the football, but we'll start by thinking about the distance that it travels. In the video, a blue curve will track the path of the football, so the length of this curve will show the distance that the football travels. As you watch, Think about how this distance changes as the ball is pulled back, then propelled forward, and finally released. Next, let's rewind the video to the start of the throw, and then we'll add axes to graph the distance the football travels in feet as a function of the elapsed time since the start of a throw in seconds. Let's watch the throw and make the graph. Now, let's start working to make a graph of the ball's speed as a function of elapsed time. To get started, let's just focus on one moment in time. Let's try to find its instantaneous speed at 4 seconds. We can do this by approximating instantaneous speed using an average speed over a small interval of time. In particular, we'll start by using a change in time of 1 second. Graphically, the slope of the secant line will give us an average rate of change that is a reasonable approximation of the instantaneous speed right at 4 seconds. To see this, let's zoom in on a region containing our amounts of change. Initially, the amount of change in time of 1 second has a corresponding amount of change in distance of 1.23 feet. This gives us an average speed of 1.23 feet per second, but we could get a better approximation by using a smaller amount of change in time. Let's decrease delta t. Now, the graph of the function is nearly linear, and the secant line is nearly identical to a tangent line. Thus, the slope of the secant line, which we can compute to get 0 0.614, now gives us the instantaneous rate of change, the value of the derivative, at t equals 4 seconds. Let's record this value of the derivative on the graph by adding a point at t equals 4 seconds with a vertical coordinate of 0 0.614. Let's look at a couple of other points on our original graph to find their slopes. We'll start with looking at t equals 1 second. We can see that the value of the derivative at t equals 1 second is 1.059 feet per second, and we can represent this as a point on the graph. Next, let's move to t equals 2.5 seconds. We can see that the value of the derivative at t equals 2.5 seconds is nearly zero, roughly 0 0.013 feet per second, and we can represent this on the graph. Next, let's move to t equals 5 seconds. We can see that the value of the derivative at t equals 5 seconds is 2.124 feet per second, and we can also represent this with a point on the graph. Now we have four values of the derivative graph. Plotting these values gives us a rough idea of what the derivative graph would look like, but we don't know for sure what happens between these points. Let's look back at time zero and see if we can find some patterns to help us construct the entire speed graph. Let's look at the first part of the distance graph. Pause the video and make a prediction about what you think the corresponding speed graph might look like. Initially, as we start moving along the time axis, for each tiny delta t, the change in distance gets larger and larger. This ratio between delta d and delta t tells us the slope of the secant line, so this means that the slope of the secant line is increasing, and so the value of the derivative function, the speed, is also increasing. So the graph of the derivative function would look like this. As we continue to move along the time axis, for each tiny delta t, the change in distance becomes less and less. Thus, the slope of the secant line is decreasing, and so the value of the derivative function, the speed, is also decreasing up until about 2.25 seconds. As we continue to move along the time axis, for each tiny delta t, there is very little change in distance. Thus, the slope of the secant line is a number close to zero, and so the value of the derivative function, the speed, is also close to zero.
up until roughly 3.25 seconds. As we move along the t-axis again, for each tiny delta t, the change in the distance again gets larger and larger. Thus, the slope of the secant line is increasing, and so the value of the derivative function, the speed, is also increasing up until around 5.25 seconds. 5.25 seconds corresponds to the moment the football was released, so the football should begin to slow down. And as we move along the time axis after the football was released, for each tiny delta t, the change in distance becomes slightly less and less. Thus, the slope of the secant line is slightly decreasing, and so the value of the derivative function, the speed, is also showing a small decrease. Now that we've completed making the graph, Let's look back and find a few key features that relate the graph of the original function with the graph of the derivative function. First, there was a section of the distance function where, as time increased, the distance did not increase or decrease. Thus, for these time values, the value of the derivative function was zero. So, we can summarize this as, if the value of the function stays constant as time increases, then the value of the derivative is zero for the corresponding time. For all of the other values, as time increased, the distance also increased. Thus, for these time values, the value of the derivative function was positive. So, we can summarize this as, if the value of the function increases as time increases, then the value of the derivative is positive for the corresponding times. And you might have noticed that between t equals 0 and t equals roughly 2.25, the distance function was initially increasing faster and faster, and then increasing more slowly. Thus, until t equals 1.25, the value of the derivative function was increasing, and then it was decreasing. Similarly, between t equals 3.25 and 5.25, the distance function was increasing faster and faster, and then, after the throw, the distance was increasing more slowly. So we can summarize this as, if the function increases by larger and larger amounts as time increases, then the value of the derivative is increasing for the corresponding times. Similarly, if the function increases by smaller and smaller amounts as time increases, then the value of the derivative is decreasing for the corresponding times. So now we have identified several patterns that can help us graph derivatives.